Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel. Today's video is about dental elevators, their types, principles and usage. Before we go any further, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button for more content and videos about dentistry and oral medicine. The elevator is the second most important instrument, after the extraction forceps, with which tooth extraction is achieved or aided. It is composed of three parts, the handle, the shank, and the blade. There are three main principles that elevators depend upon, the wedging, the levering, and the wheel and axis. The shape of blade differs for each elevator type, and each is used as the need dictates. There are three main types of elevators used today in oral surgery, the straight elevator, the pair of double-angled elevator, and the pair of elevators with T-shaped or crossbar handles. This type of crossbar elevator, as the figure shows, is used only in the lower jaw for removal of a root of a molar, after the other root has already been removed with the straight elevator. In certain cases, the T-shaped elevator with the triangle blade may be used to remove a whole third molar of the lower jaw. The tip of the elevator is placed into the root bifurcation buckle to the tooth, using the strong external oblique ridge as a fulcrum. There are two common types of these crossbars, the socket applicator crossbar and the buckle applicator crossbar. The difference between them is in the angle between the handle and the shank, in the socket applicator it's purely 90 degrees perpendicular, while in the buckle applicator it's obtuse in order to adapt to the buckle divergence of the lower jaw. It can generate large amount of force and therefore must be used with great caution and not in the upper jaw since its bone is spongy and weak. It's also called Winter's Elevator. Straight Elevator. This is the most commonly used type of elevator for the removal of teeth and roots, in both the upper and lower jaws. The elevator is held in the dominant hand, and the index finger is placed along the blade, almost reaching its end. The end of the blade is left exposed and is seated between the socket and the tooth to be luxated. The most commonly used types of straight elevator are the hospital pattern straight elevator, which has a rounded tip with vertical serrations on the inner surface of the blade and it provides the best leverage due to the serrations. The second one is the straight apexo elevator which has a rounded but more pointed tip and a smooth inner concave surface with no serrations, this one provides the best wedging due to the more pointed tip and narrow circumference, it uses levering and wedging principles but mainly wedging. The third one is the Copeland Chisel Straight Elevator, which has a flat tip not rounded and a smooth concave inner surface. This one provides excellent luxation since the concavity of highly configured to the root, it can luxate an entire tooth before extraction, it can be used in wedging and luxation. Double angled elevators are mainly used to remove root tips in both jaws. They are also very useful instruments for the extraction of impacted third molars of the upper jaw. Their handle is similar to that of the straight elevator. The shank has a double angle so that the instrument may enter the socket. The curved apexo is most common one. It is used for removing of apical fragments of root deeply present in the socket of the lower jaw, especially molars. It also used instead of the straight elevator in both upper and lower posterior teeth since it's very similar to the straight apexo but generates less force due to the angulation. There is a very important type of elevator called crier elevator. It has a straight handle and shank design but with a triangular blade. It's paired mesial and distal. It can be used in the wedging, levering and or wheel and axle. It's used when a broken root remains in the socket and the adjacent socket is empty as shown here. The last one is the mucoperiosteal elevator. Used to detach the periosteum from bone following an incision or to detach the gingival tissues from around the neck of the tooth prior to placement of extraction forceps. It's double-ended with one round, blunted end and one pointed end. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned.